Hey, Home Safari viewers. Welcome to the Cincinnati Zoo Botanical Garden. We're at our lion habitat today with Imani. Uh, my name is Wendy, and I'm here with my coworker Alexa. And we're going to see if Imani might be interested in doing a training demonstration for you guys while we learn all about lions. Um, so Alexa is going to start working with Imani there. We'll have a chance to observe. Give her a yeah. So today, Imani's going to be working for some tasty meatballs. Um, lions are obligate carnivores, which means they have to eat meat, and they only eat meat. And that's what they eat to survive. So they get lots of different kinds of meat here at the zoo. <laughs> She's like, what you want me to do? Now I go over here to get the meatball. <laughs> oh, so those of you who have been to our lion habitat and visited, and if you were lucky enough to see training demonstrations live, you'll know that at the center of this glass viewing panel, we have this big fake tree, and it has a couple of arms sticking out of it that are actually hiding some feed shoots. So there's a tube that runs from all the way out here where we are on this side of the glass down to where Imani is, so that we're able to drop the meatballs down to her um, safely and so that she gets reinforced for all of her hard work. Uh, the training that we do with our cats is great for them in a couple of different ways. One, it's physically stimulating, so we can kind of get them up and moving and interacting with us. Two, it allows them to participate in their own care in certain ways. Um, so for example, you saw Alexa was just asking for that open mouth behavior so we can check her teeth out, make sure everything looks healthy and good, see if we need to contact our veterinary dentist or anything like that. Um, I will say, too, we have some ducklings that have decided to visit the lion habitat and have been swimming around in the moat. So far today, Amani has been interested in watching them, but it doesn't seem like she cares to try to hunt them, so that's good. But she does get distracted a little bit by them, so if she loses focus, we're going to be pretty understanding, because ducklings are adorable, and they distract humans all the time, too. Um, let's see, so if you are familiar with our cats, you will also know that Imani has a partner named John, and John and Imani are usually out here together. Oh, that was a good lay down. Um, in order for Imani to be able to focus on her training, we have John behind the scenes waiting his turn to come out, but he will be joining us towards the end of Imani's training session. We were going to try to get John out here and see if they would train together. But John opted out on this beautiful day. He said, nope, I don't feel like participating. And that's actually kind of important to talk about, too. Um, as often as we can, in as many scenarios as we can, we like to give our animals choice and let them have freedom, let them decide what their day is going to look like, if they want to participate in training, enrichment, things like that, if they want to be inside or outside. Um, animals seem to just be happier and do better in general with the more choices that they have. So John is choosing not to train today, but hopefully will be joining us in a little bit. Um, lions are pretty amazing cats. They're my favorite species of cats, and they're different from many other species of cats out there in a few ways, so we're going to talk about some of those. For one, lions are the only species of cat that are considered truly social, and they live in big family units called prides. A lion pride can have anywhere from three to 30 individuals, and the majority of the individuals in that pride are gonna be related females. So mothers and daughters, sisters, aunties, and nieces. And then in those prides, there will be either one dominant male or a few males. Sometimes those males are brothers and are related. Um, a good example of that, the Lion King demonstrated that beautifully. So Mufasa was our alpha male in the pride, but his brother Scar was also a part of that pride. Um, so depending on that alpha male and his personality, he may or may not allow brothers to be a part of his pride. But obviously there's a certain risk involved with that if you do have other males involved in the pride. And again, Lion King got that part of the story right. As we see, they might challenge you, they might try to take over. Um, in the pride, the lionesses are actually the ones responsible for hunting. So the lionesses will go out and hunt together and kind of feed the family and bring home the bacon. <laughs> and scientists have actually learned by studying lions in the wild that individual lions, individual lions even have different roles during a hunt based on their body type, based on their skill set. So your faster, quicker females that are a bit more agile might be responsible for chasing and flushing a prey item. 
and your bigger, stronger, bulkier females would be responsible for tackling that prey item or taking it down and making it kill. So that's some pretty cool stuff. Um, aside from lions being the only social cats, they are one species of cat that exhibits sexual dimorphism pretty awesomely. So sexual dimorphism means that the boys and the girls have some pretty major differences between them. So a lot of times that's based on what we can see. Um, so we are all getting a good look at Miss Imani Cat right now, who's a female. And now that she's done with her training session, we're going to invite John to come out and join her. So when John comes out here, you're going to get to see our male lion, and you'll notice one major difference between the two of them that should be very apparent right off the bat. Um, so male lions actually grow and develop that big, beautiful, gorgeous, furry mane that we're all so familiar with, and that's so very iconic to the look of the lion. Um, the males develop that big, hairy mane because they have all this extra testosterone in their bodies, and testosterone means more hair, as maybe some of our viewers out there can relate to. All right, so if John chooses to join us, which again, we talk about choice, and he doesn't have to if he doesn't want to, but... Hopefully John will choose to join us and he'll be coming from the back of our habitat up here. And if he does come out, he'll get a delicious femur bone, which we're gonna offer to Imani now. <laughs> Let's see, so we talked about sexual dimorphism. Hopefully John will come out and demonstrate that for us um, while he's making his way out. If you take a look at Imani's tail, you will notice that she has a very unique tail for a cat. It actually has that pretty black tuft on the end. And a tufted tail is unique to lions as well. No other species of cat has that. And the tail tuft actually is not just cool looking, it's very functional and it serves um, a purpose in how the lions communicate with one another. So if you have a cat at home, you're already gonna be familiar with how cats use their tails to communicate how they're feeling and what they want and what their intentions are. Um, so some of you might already know that when your cat gets grouchy, one of the first things they'll do is kind of start flicking their tail around. That tuft on the end of the tail kind of just exemplifies that tail tip and it exaggerates whatever the lion is communicating with their tail. Just says it makes it a little easier for anybody reading those signals to understand what their intentions are, what their communication is. Also, that tail can be super helpful when the lionesses are out hunting, especially if they are um, stalking prey items, if they've split up and they're hiding in grass. They can actually just take that tail, flick it up in the air, and almost use it as a little signal flag to signal their positions to one, each other, or to one another and to kind of signal and communicate where they need their sister to go, where mom needs to go, who's doing what at what time. Um, so it's pretty cool. It's functional. And it's just very impressive looking. You want to try and call him? Yeah. John! <laughs> Ooh. John's like, what? What's up? Uh, Mama. Bonus <laughs> phone for Imani. <laughs> so since John is out here in the habitat but hanging around at the back, I guess you guys, um, anyone who's very familiar with our habitat will notice some new features out there. So we have this brand new awesome enrichment tree that's sort of at the center and the back of our habitat and John's kind of tucked away hiding behind it at this time. We also have this brand new pride rock feature that overlooks our moat and kind of faces one of our public viewing areas. Um, and then these big giant massive logs that we brought in as well which are great for perching and scratching. And these changes were just done this winter. So we just started letting our cats back out into the space earlier this week. And John is not entirely sure that he's convinced that he likes the changes just yet. <laughs> so that's one of the reasons he's kind of hanging around at the back, still trying to get comfortable with change. Um, like some people out there, John doesn't love change. He just, he's like, no, why can't things just stay the way they are? But he always adjusts well and gets comfortable with time. Um, Imani, very different on the other hand. Imani came out day one and loved everything immediately. And she was actually laying on Pride Rock watching the ducklings earlier today. Um, let's see here. Do we have any questions from our viewers that... Yeah, we did get a couple questions about why lions roar and how far away you can hear it. Ooh, that's a great question. Um, so you can hear a lion's roar for up to five miles away. So some of you that live very close to the zoo might actually be able to hear John roaring from time to time. 
and lions will roar to communicate different things to each other. Um, one thing they're communicating to other lions is their location. So basically male lion would roar to let all the other rival males in the area know like, I'm here, this is my habitat, this space is taken, these ladies are taken, don't bother coming into my territory. Um, they can also roar as a demonstration of how big and strong and healthy they are. So a male lion might roar to kind of show off in front of a female. And, oh, they can also do the roaring as a contact call. So the, the social unit, the family, will start roaring and everybody will join in and do this big chorus of roars together. And sometimes it can just be like a team building exercise, like get together with your team and you do a chant or a cheer together or a song. Um, and sometimes in their case, it's also to contact each other. If somebody's gotten too far away or lost track of the pride, they can let each other know, hey, we're all here, come back, come back to our voice. Um, so very functional, lots of reasons why they might roar. And they typically do a lot of that demonstration and territorial roaring at dawn and dusk. So especially if you've been here at the zoo early in the morning or later in the evening for one of our evening events, you probably had the privilege of hearing John and Imani roar, which is always cool. like, what? what's happening over here? Yeah. Oh, I think one of our guests was asking about uh, how much our lions weigh. So Imani is weighing in at 307 pounds as of this week. And John is tipping the scales at around 420 pounds. So there's about a 120 pound difference between them, if you can believe it or not. Sometimes it's hard to see it. It's hard to tell because Imani's a little thicker looking and John looks more slender, but his build is bigger. And John has serious muscle on him. Um, so for those of you who are following along with the home safaris and if you're participating in the activities portion, we have two activities set up for you guys today. And you can find information on both of them on our zoo's website under the home safari section. Um, the first activity is going to be perfect, especially if you have little ones. It's kind of an art and craft type deal. So you're actually going to be making your own lion's mane. Uh, so you're going to use whatever paper products you have around the house, art supplies, fun things like that. Paper plates are a great option um, to transform yourselves into lions to make your own mane. And the second activity um, will be great, especially for anybody out there who's fairly tech savvy. So we're actually going to encourage you to participate in animal research by helping scientists sort through camera trap images. Um, so you would download the Zooniverse app. That's spelled Z-O-O-N-I-V-E-R-S-E, Zooniverse. And then once you have that app downloaded, you would go to Snapshot Kruger. So that's the specific project that we're plugging because there's a chance that some of the camera trap images that you'll see will actually have lions in them, which is awesome. Um, so the way it works is scientists working in Kruger National Park in South Africa set up camera traps all over the park, um, hoping to snag photos of the animals that live in that area. And they're just trying to collect data on what species of animals live in that area, what numbers they're in, um, any kind of interactions they're having with each other. And they end up with thousands and thousands of images that can take a really long time for a few people to sort through. So that's where you come in you guys can help them sort through those images and you're basically going to identify whether or not there's an animal in that picture. So you kind of swipe left for no, no, no animals in this photo. Must have been a blade of grass that triggered the camera or something like that. Um, and you would swipe right for yes, I see an animal. And the cool thing about it is that if you're big into animals and if you're following us on the home safari and you're following our, our zoo's Facebook page, then you're probably into animals. Um, it's really cool because you never know what animal you're going to see next in the next image. So you might see lions, you might see warthogs and Paula. Today, for the first time ever, I had a honey badger. And it was, it was a pretty big moment for me. Um, so you can kind of get the whole family involved. You can pick out a species of animal that's a goal that you hope somebody will find. Um, like today, today we're going to try, we're going to sort images until we see um, an aardvark for example, or something cool like that. And the best part about it is that you're actively participating in actual research that's happening. So you're being a wildlife warrior right from your couch. You're helping scientists accomplish uh, their goals out in the wild to try to better the lives of the animals out there, to make a difference. 
and help all these amazing, cool animals like lions uh, make a comeback and continue to thrive and survive. We've had a lot of people ask if they're fast and who their favorite keeper is. <laughs> uh, yeah, these guys can be really fast when they want to be, absolutely. The prey items that they hunt are faster, so lions typically have to rely on teamwork and cooperation in order to actually successfully capture and kill prey. But they're definitely fast, faster than humans for sure. And do the lions have favorite keepers? Um, I guess you would have to ask them. <laughs> They do have um, keepers that work more frequently with them than other keepers might. So I'm the primary keeper on their routine, so I get to see these guys usually five days a week. And we have a couple secondary keepers that work with them as well. Um, if it's based off of familiarity and who feeds them the most, I might be their favorite just because I get to work with them the most at this time. Uh, but they do have personalities, and they do develop relationships with their care team staff. So yeah, they probably do have their own individual preferences. Uh, but it's hard to say what they are without being able to ask them. They can swim. That's a great question. Yeah, lions are more than capable of swimming. Um, for the most part, they don't seem to want to swim. At least our lions don't. John and Imani, I don't think, have ever been in the moat beyond their like elbows, basically, of their front legs. Um, but if there's enough of a motivation and a reason to swim... For example, those ducklings that could look real tempting in a few days' time if they're not careful. Uh, that might be reason enough to go for a swim. John actually has a brother named Baruti, who I believe lives at the Calgary Zoo. And Baruti's nickname is the Water Cat because he loves to swim and he gets into their moat habitat or their moat uh, feature of their habitat all the time. Um, our cats just aren't particularly interested in swimming. Lions climb in trees? Oh, that's a great question. Yes, lions can climb. They do climb regularly. They're actually very good climbers. And that's one of the features of lions that we're hoping to highlight with our new tree that we've built into our habitat back there. Um, we've got that big long log kind of wedged up against there to give them easy access to get to the top of that tree. But in the wild, lions will go up into trees as a safe place to rest and also to get a better view of the savanna, the habitat, to try to scout for prey, basically, to look at like, all right, where's the next meal? We'll get up nice and high so we can see better, have a good vantage point. Oh, mock. <laughs> There's lions demonstrating how they are uh, protective over food. Not always great about sharing. That's where that expression, the lion's share, comes from. So the biggest, toughest, meanest cats in the pride are going to make sure that they get their fair share of every meal. And today it looks like that cat is Imani. <laughs> she says, I'll fight you for it. Do they have a favorite food item? Um, yeah, they have fairly individual tastes. Um, so Imani's favorite protein item that she gets is goat. Goat is hands down one of her favorites. She loves goat. Uh, John gets a couple of different whole prey items, and it seems like rabbit is his favorite of those. All right, I think that is going to about do it for us here at the Cincinnati Zoo Lion Habitat. Thank you so much for joining myself, uh, my fellow keeper Alexa, and John and Imani, of course. Hope you guys are doing well at home, everybody. Stay healthy out there. And if you would like to tune in tomorrow again at 3 p.m., we're going to be visiting with our penguins. Have a good day.